what I'm going to try to share with you now is probably the most valuable thing we could know, we could learn to resolve in a world that argues and fights over um, the problems that it has, the arguments. The worst thing that you can do for any, uh, in any social, civil, political argument, confrontation, a cause or a problem between countries or what have you, is to separate the issue in a, in a polar argument. Uh, of two sides, for example. Uh, basically what, if you think about it, it's what we do about everything. Um, abortion, to abort or to not abort. Uh, gay is good and they should have rights, or it's not and people, you know, don't, don't go with it. it's bad, you know, it's something to condemn. Um, countries being right over the other country. Um, one country being right over another country. The polarization creates a situation that um, evades and avoids seeing what we're actually looking for when we argue and discuss. Not discuss. Discuss would be smarter, I suppose. Uh, when we argue and fight, when we take sides, we automatically avoid what we're actually looking for. The very reason for we, why we argue is what we're looking for. The reason people argue and confront and fight is because they want to uphold and uh, get to the truth, to what's correct, and uphold it. Have it be victorious. Have it win over the prevailing uh, discussion or the or, or the prevailing sentiment at the moment, the prevailing belief at the moment. So what motivates us and what impassions us is to fight for truth, in other words. It sounds almost like we say it so, so many times when really we don't know where it applies. Well, this is where it applies. People get fired up because in the silence of their quick reasoning during an argument, or while thinking about something, they actually see a problem, they see something that is, suddenly see something that is a, a more truthful, more correct uh, aspect or analysis, and then they become impassioned because we all get fired up with passion when we understand a, a truer, a more correct understanding of, um, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a polemic, of a problem that is... Uh, that people are arguing over. It could be scientific. Why do scientists become impassioned? Because they discover in an environment where the common beliefs dead end uh, in these areas and then there's a prevailing uh, belief about this science subject that um, is defined a certain way, all of a sudden they see something that is higher and they become motivated. So it really uh, this is basically why, why we're fighting, why we're arguing. Now, uh, what is important to understand is um, why we're not able to see the truth. Because if two sides, first what we need to understand is why typically two sides are created. Why, we ha why have we dropped anchor on the, on the assumption that there's always a... A, a, a dark and a light, uh, two sides to every to you know. There's even um, sayings. This is, there's two sides to every to every story or two truths or what have you. Um, when it comes to understanding the human being, our um, our the the human existential condition, understanding truly. Um, as a, a natural creation, the collective of humanity, our individual intelligence is limited as also our collective intelligence is limited. We can only compute, quote unquote, we can only process so much reasoning within a certain amount of time. We can only uh, digest so many understandings 
before other aspects uh, conclusive motivation you know, driving forces um, have us lose momentum and interest in, in we have we have like a ceiling to um, we're not a computer we can't process 24 7 all the time so this limitation basically is the reason we can't uh, arrive at the absolute truth about things and and we have created a world where we have even come to say s dumb stuff like there there is no truth is relative to everything you know it all is whatever you make it and all this you know we go elsewhere we fill the absence of um, the true understanding for the things that we want to understand with other things because there's one thing that doesn't go away which is that mankind needs to answer his questions we need to understand why things are the way they are and until whenever we pose ourselves a question or we see a problem or something that makes us uncomfortable or something that feels not right or is not supposed to be either intuitively or logically we will always uh, we will never sit comfortable until we find an answer an explanation now in a condition in a condition where in an existential condition where our intelligence can only go so far and we're only talking about the human uh, cerebral uh, living intelligence we're not talking about the collective summary of our ac academic literature and th things that have been constructed with our with writing and with recording and so forth um, and, and subjects that are contained in, in, in books that, that, that contain the whole knowledge of subjects no we're not talking about that social knowledge and intelligence we're talking about our actual physical physiological capacity what actually ends up making the world regardless of our inventions and, and our the artifice of civilization so um, because we fill this with the need to answer we answer our questions we settle for things because what is most important is that we're not left in the dark we, we must prioritize answer our questions and so that means that we're arguing uh, we're not arguing we're I'm sorry we're um, we're thinking and there is a factor of, of uh, a factor of competition in other words if you m create a circle or a group of people that say why is that tree leaning over away from the water how come it's not leaning towards the stream and a bunch of people gather around and look at this tree let's say that it's really important you know um, um, you know it could mean that the water is toxic or maybe um, this is the only tree that we've ever seen that way and, and somehow it's, it's very important maybe it's an important tree a religious symbol or something but um, as an example, it's a little hard to understand why the whole group would, would be motivated to find out. But if we said, for example, um, you know, we always hunted our, our deer, our venison, by the stream, and all of a sudden we get to a new valley as a collective, as a clan or a tribe, and we see that the venison in this valley don't come down to the stream like everywhere else that we've ever known they apparently get their water from somewhere else um, or they're not interested in going to that river to drink water so because we need to hunt them then it becomes really important so the community gathers and we need to find out why the venison are not coming to um, the, the, de the deer I don't know venison is a fancy word I just kind of liked it I'm not sure if it means only the meat that is whatever uh, able to uh, good for eating of the deer but whatever um, and what happens is naturally in, uh, finding uh, for uh, in other words, that our intelligent the prowess of our intelligent logic the, our gift as, as, as mankind as a humanity that we have which makes puts us apart from animals and this vast 
capacity to create sciences and engineering, this logical intelligence that mankind has, is so um, so important and so strong and so powerful for our own survival, um, so necessary. It's the reason why we must answer our curiosity, our questions. Um, that it also generates competition, not because we're mean and we want to, um, you know, uh, devalue uh, de de other people's proposals on the problem, but because such is the importance of arriving, of uh, intelligence advancing and furthering the species, our intelligence carrying us forward. So not only do we want to answer, but we compete for uh, finding the truth about why the deer uh, are not going to the water, why the tree is le not leaning towards the water. Um, so this creates, because of the fact that it, we are still nonetheless limited as far as understanding truly how the design of our species, we understand it. We have written a whole bunch and we have probably covered everything that there is to understand, but we're not able to apply it as a collective. We live, we are arguing, we are fighting, we, we know that children are the most important thing uh, for the species. We build family and we build homes sometimes around the children and in our preschools are sacred and there's always a police station nearby or a patrol car that looks after the, the preschool. But still, our, if you think about the whole of our civilization, we don't demonstrate, we don't reflect that. We actually kill our own, our own children in wars. And we, we, we put uh, toxics, toxins in our, in the toxic stuff in our food. And, and we don't care. We measure how much arson there, there can actually be in drinking water. You know, we're a little, it seems that we're a little nuts sometimes, but it's because we just can't get it all on the on the whole plate we can get everything that we have learned uh, streamlined onto the axis onto the axes of our singular path and so because because we are individually and there and thus collectively uh, only so smart we're very intelligent but we're not so intelligent that we can calculate collectively to the point of maintaining the optimal for the whole species, which is the optimal for each one of us. And so what occurs is that in a group situation, for example, um, we argue, in a group situation, we would find, in this example, we would find a reason why the venison are not coming to the water or the tree is not leaning to the water. Uh, but if you uh, bump up the scale, and you all of a sudden we're talking about thousands, it, it would be more like some of us learn it uh, all the way on this end, but all the way on the other end of the country, people are just carrying forward. They're just going forward. They can't because there's a, uh, the forces of time and distance become more, um, become more affecting of communication. And so that's where we exhibit the limits of our intelligence because we can't seem to hold as much memory as we need in order for once that is learned and we we establish this is the optimal I'm telling you this is absolutely the way it has to be um, we will not have wars as long as a, ch a child can die in, in, in a war and so that may be a sentiment shared but by the time and, and maybe might create uh, the way a people in a part of the world go about civilization and when they war it's like they remove all the children and they prepare a field or something right like in old days like you know the soldiers would fight they would uh, they would still pillage and rape the women okay anyways but by the time we got to the other part of of the of the country the time that it would require for the collective to achieve that optimal conclusion and actually enacted socially would um, would be just as long as it took the other ones. And how can I say this? There's just so much going on in the, uh, in, in incrementally by the numbers 
My cat is driving me crazy. I have to lock him out of the room because he's not letting me concentrate.